history lesson time. Three weeks ago, this Philadelphia Eagles team played the Miami Dolphins at home and choked a 16-3 lead away and lost the game. Went on the next week to play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, lost 45-17 to to Jameis Winston, a rookie quarterback who passed for five touchdowns. Went on the next week. Matt Stafford, Megatron, the whole crew from Detroit on Thanksgiving Day managed to lose that game 45-14. to Eagles with one, two, three, four, just three losses in a row. Going in, going in to New England, the defending champs favored by 10 points. I don't want to hear anything about excuses of injuries. You had a team that just gave up 90 collective points to the last two teams they faced. By the way, those two teams were the Buccaneers and the Lions. And we came to your house and fucking ripped the fucking victory out of your fingertips. Could you taste it? Could you taste that victory? Could you taste that Philadelphia collapse? Any given Sunday happens for a reason, and this is that Sunday that it happens. Here they come. Here come the fucking Eagles in the Gillette Stadium taking away that victory. You had that game wrapped up 14 to nothing in the second. 14 to nothing. What does Bill Belichick do? Onside kick. Onside kick to a team that was beat the fuck down. Not just today, but previous weeks as I listed. You know what happens? You can kick a dog in the gut so much, kick him in the dirt, kick dirt in his face, start shoveling that dirt in the face. The, trust me, the whole, all the teams around the NFL were just shoveling fucking dirt on the dog that was this Eagles team. But you can only do that so long before an ounce of pride fucking shows up and that dog jumps up and bites you in the fucking throat. Bites you in the fucking throat. Fucking onside kick with a 14-0 lead, Bill. Get the fuck out of here, Bill. Two losses in a row for you scumbag motherfuckers. I ain't gonna dwell on anything negative from the Eagles in this game. Trust me, there's a lot. Specifically, a specific linebacker who fucking sucks on this team that we got rid of our premier running back for. But let this serve lesson to you, Bill and Tom. More specifically, Bill. Kicking an onside kick when you've got the game more than in control. If you don't get that back and the team decides that they actually have an ounce of pride, they're like, damn, these guys are trying to fucking clown us. They're up 14 to nothing. They're already manhandling us. They had the game completely under control. The Philly offense wasn't doing anything. The defense was doing okay. They held the Patriots to zero points in the first quarter, but I mean, they were at the two yard, the Patriots were two yards away from scoring at the end of the first quarter. They had everything. All of a sudden, the second quarter starts. Two touchdowns, just like that for the Patriots. Onside kick, momentum gone. Momentum gone. Right back to Philadelphia. 100-yard pick six for my boy Jenkins. Punt return touchdown for my boy Sproles. That's why he's my favorite player on this team. Suck it up, Patriot fans. By the way, <laughs> I bet a lot of you were regretting leaving that stadium early. But we had a lot of injuries. We had a lot of injuries. The problem with your team today was is that Tom was getting the ball to his receivers and the receivers were going clunk, 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 clunk. Oh, My favorite receiver was when Tom passed to Jenkins. Oh wait, he's not on that team. And then <laughs> Tom made that uh, tackle. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fall on Jenkins as he goes by. Uh. I know you got the Super Bowl rings, and frankly, you're probably gonna be back in the Super Bowl this year. But you know what? Give me this one fucking second to sit in the fucking sunshine. One fucking second. Cause we came in as the fucking dirt dogs to your front porch and ripped your fucking throat out. Ripped your fucking throat out, bent you down, got you right down the ground, and did you fucking dirty. 
Fuck you, Tom. Fuck you, Bill. Onside kick in the second quarter. Let's see who had the balls to try and do that again, Bill. Fucking handed, handed the game of momentum and just gave the Eagles be like, okay, we'll give you a short field to work with. Oh, shit, they got a touchdown. Oh, shit, a block punt right before halftime. Oh, tie game. I guarantee you, Bill went into halftime going, damn, I wish I didn't try that onside kick. Again, I'm not going to focus on anything negative from the Eagles, and trust me, there's, there's quite a bit negative. But this is just like, what is going on here? What the fuck is going on here? No one in their sound, rational mind honestly saw the Eagles win in this game. Yeah, there's probably some people that predicted it as a fluke or whatever. But uh, this, as I said, if the Eagles would have won, it would have been a fluke. This Eagles team won because they were clearly the better team. It was insane. I was like, who are these guys? How is this the team that just gave up 90 total points to the, to the, the Buccaneers and the Lions in back-to-back -back weeks? <clears throat> Someone tweeted out, and I said this guy makes a lot of sense, and I'll let you guys sit on this and think on this, is, is this the real Eagles team? Or is this still an Eagles team that does not want to play for Chip? Because I find it hard to believe that you can play the world champs this hard, but then all of a sudden you just you can't even show up to play the Bucks or the Lions? I mean, any given Sunday type wins happen, but this was a bit more than that. This was a team firing all cylinders. Like so many guys stepping up, just, just clowning Tom Brady, clowning him. Like, there is no excuse to lose to this Eagles team. None, son. But you did. <sighs> this is way more glorious than I get. Well, first, I, I couldn't bring my mind to really thinking that the Eagles were going to win this game. And a lot of people are saying, like, well, you got Chip stuck in for another year. We have Chip stuck here for another year no matter what. Like I said, all the college, all the good college jobs dried up. Tennessee ain't going to want Chip, and Jeff Lurie is not going to fire someone who he makes GM the first year of doing so. Chip was going to be back here no matter what. The Eagles could have lost out the rest of the season, and Chip would still be here. All I know is I'm going to sit back, enjoy this, watch Tom and Bill cry, and taste their fucking tears and the sweetness. Mm, tastes so sweet. It's like, it's like when, when Cartman tasted Scott Tetterman's tears. Mmm. Delicious. How about them fucking eagles? I just... I could do without the ten heart attacks I had at the end of the game, though. I'll give you that much. I just... I, I was just... I was ready to just... I, I was just ready to just, just do a live shot of me jumping off the Ben Franklin Bridge if the eagles blew this one. So relieved, so pleased. But again, is this a team that is just showing you how good they can play, but does not want to play for Chip? Because right now, this team beat a world beater. Whether they had a full deck or not, this team beat a world beater. Let's take it one week at a time. Let's take it one week at a time. I ain't, I ain't going to sit here and tell you for a second I see grand expectations from them. We're going to take this one week at a time, guys. Everyone, sit back, relax, enjoy the show. And I, I'm excited that I'm going to the Buffalo game next week in Philly. And the crowd is going to be energized going into that game. Like, it's not going to be a bunch of dead fish sitting in seats. <sighs> More on this game Tuesday morning when I do the recap and everything. Let's just, let's just digest this, guys. Have a good day. Oh, and Dallas Cowboys. Why don't you beat them Redskins? Have a good day, everyone.